guys, what's going on? In today's video, we are going to be highlighting the newest card to Marvel Snap, Proxima Midnight. And honestly, after a lot of the gameplay testing I've been doing, she really is a consistent, strong card for the discard archetype. But she really performs best in the deck that I released last week, the collect and discard list. So I just made a few changes and I just wanted to get this video out here quickly for you to, to see some more strong discard gameplay with uh, Proxima and Corvus. And Proxima herself is pretty strong in most discard lists. You can even throw her in the hello list since she works just as well. She's not the best in that list. There's other cards I would have in over her, but if you want to have a little bit of consistency and you're worried about discarding Hella, you can just have Proxima and she kind of has a nice value card in that list. But honestly, her best lists are the types that are gonna be discarding a ton of cards and you're not really focusing on bringing those cards back in. You're just trying to dump your hand and add into it. So if you are a fan of the discard archetype, I would absolutely pick her up. She just is a solid, consistent card. She's always gonna have good value. The keys with her are obviously are just properly allocating power to your correct location so you can control where she's gonna hop onto the field. She's not the flashiest, she's not the overall strongest card in the, your deck, but her consistent value is what makes her a great card, so she's gonna find herself in gameplay a lot, and there's various lists that you're gonna see her in, and she's probably gonna be consistent in the discard meta for a long time. So without further ado, let us get into the discard with love deck list. And since this list is very similar to the list I put out last week, the collect and discard deck, you can look at the video right now. Uh, I'm going to just be very brief and quick about what was really needed in this deck, assuming you probably saw that video. So first off, we have Blade, and Blade is in this list because he is the cheapest discard option you can get, and he has a good consistent discard. You know what you're going to discard. Obviously, it depends on what is going to be in your right of your hand, but there's a lot of times you can control that if you've already discarded your Swarm or your Apocalypse. So he's very consistent value and it's just a good card to have in your list. And Morbius is an obvious must have in this list because the whole goal of this deck really is to be adding stuff to your hand and discarding stuff from your hand. So you really wanna be strategic with your snapping. If you know you've drawn Morbius or the Collector, early in the game and you can start ramping them up, you probably want to snap very early into the game so you can maximize the potential cubes you can get because if your Morbius obviously is getting out of hand and your opponent's not playing a rogue or an enchantress or maybe a Shang-Chi, they're, they're going to run away early. And like I was saying, paired with Morbius the Collector is a must have because he is a nice low cost card that can ramp up into power significantly. And there's a lot of cards in this deck that you're gonna be adding cards back to your hand, Swarm, Apocalypse, or Helicarrier. So there is gonna be value to the Collector and it's kind of nice. He doesn't necessarily get over 10 power. So you're kind of safe from the Shang-Chi a lot of the time with him. And Swarm is simply a must have because one, he is a card that likes to be discarded and there's not a ton of them in the game. And two, he's adding cards to your hand, which is valuable for both the Collector and Morbius, which you need. And I'm gonna pair up Corvus Glaive and Proxima Midnight here, just in a quick explanation. They're the reason the name is called Discard with Love because they're the couple in the Black Order, husband and wife under Thanos. But you're running Corvus because one, he discards multiple cards, which is extremely valuable, and he's adding energy so you can kind of ramp up and do a few things that you may not be able to do otherwise. And obviously Proxima Midnight is a must-have, one, because she's the newest card and is the highlight of this deck, but two, she's one of the few cards in this game that like to be discarded, so she's perfect in this deck where you're trying to really just discard as much as you can and get rid of your hand. And just remember the only thing that I was saying earlier as well with Proxima, make sure you understand where your power is being distributed so you can get her to go to the location that you want her to. And if you watched last week's video, I had Dracula in the flex position, but I've moved him over to a must have. He works extremely well with Apocalypse, obviously, and there's a lot of value in this list for having cards that gain their power after the game is over so they aren't necessarily the Shang-Chi target or 
it has the opportunity to play mind games with your opponent on figuring out what is going to be discarded and how much power your Dracula is going to gain. And simply, as a deck that wants to discard as many cards as possible, there is no other card better at discarding than Modok, so he is a must-have in the list. And Apocalypse is a must-have as well because he is a great target to be discarded, he works well with Dracula, and he's also adding a card back into your hand so he can ramp up your collector. And Helicaria pretty much has the same applicable reasoning as Apocalypse as a must-have, and also there's the potential for you to have some unexpected plays if you get some good cards from the RNG of the Helicarrier into your hand. And moving on to the flex, honestly, the flex has turned into pretty much what discard option you want to run in your deck. Uh, I have Colleen Wing in here because she is a cheaper option and a consistent target to discard. So she's pretty good for Swarm or if you're running Dokken like I am, she can get Muramasa Shard out of your hand. Uh, but I've kind of phased her out a little bit more just because the Shard and Swarm are going to get discarded most likely from other stuff. So I have found more value in a stronger discard archetype effect from other cards over her. And the cards that I would say fall into that category are going to be Gambit and Moon Knight for me personally. Uh, right now, I would say Gambit is probably more valuable just because the Moon Knight aspect, there's a lot of discard mirror match going on right now, and he's not as valuable. But I think in the future, you'll see more value in the potential of discarding cards from your opponent's hand in Moon Knight. So I think Gambit is really strong, obviously. Like, if you can get priority and somebody throws out a Morbius and you have Gambit in your hand on turn three and that's his only card you're going to get to destroy one of his best cards for free so you're probably going to snap and then make him retreat but in the future I think when discard is not as heavy and everywhere I think Moon Knight might find more value and I have Dokken moved over from the must-have in my previous video into the flex in this video because the shard and the 3-8 value it turns Dokken into is still pretty strong. And obviously adding the shard to your hand and you have a collector out bumps up your collector a little bit more. But I could see him finding his way out of the list if you want to have more, more discard in your list to really just throw cards out of your hand as much as possible. And finally, I have Lady Sif in here as a, another alternative flex discard option because one, a lot of people, if they're lower collecting levels, have her already. And two, if you really wanted to play a little more consistent targeted discard to ramp up your apocalypse even, even more, she's a good option. Uh, and obviously she can also hit your helicarrier earlier. So if you wanted to have more alternative options into your hand or more stuff to discard, she can work well in that aspect. So guys, that was a quick overview of the Discard with Love deck. Obviously, it's pretty similar to the last video I put out, but I feel like it's important to reiterate how strong this is in comparison to the other decks I've been testing with Proxima. So I just wanted to reinforce the Discard archetype with Proxima and get this video out for you. And we're at the point of the video that I want to remind everybody, if you like the content, please like comment and subscribe there's still over 95 percent of people who are watching this channel who are not subscribed so i would appreciate it a lot if you could give that button a click but with that being said let us move over to a little bit of the infinite gameplay to wrap up the video for you guys and first up here we have no mercy the shining rock emblem and corvus in the opening hand is always something you like to see limbo depending on what deck we're going against here is not Great. Iceman, of course it will hit our Corvus. And we draw Dracula, which is fine. Playing a control type list here. It's probably playing Miss Marvel. Medusa, okay. don't see another opportunity for us to get Morbius out without worrying him being discarded, so I'm going to play Morbius here to set up a Corvus Glaive next turn. He goes ahead and Medusa's middle, which is expected. I'm going to go ahead and Corvus into the middle here. Get that Stark power, Tower bonus onto him. And obviously here we're looking for him to hit Apocalypse and 
anything but Dracula or Modoc would be ideal. And we're even okay. We'd rather have Helicaria be hit in Negasonic middle. And we'd rather have Helicaria hit first anyway, so we can still draw a card. And of course it hits Modoc. It's fine, we got six here now. It's almost worth dooming here. Okay, I'm gonna doom for the potential value. And if we get Professor X to right, we get Professor X to right. Is what it is. And he is enjoying taking his sweet time. It's unfortunate. We had quite the good setup as long as Modoc didn't get discarded and that seems to be how the cookie crumbles with this card sometimes. The most likely card to be discarded is the one you want the most in your hand. Mr. Fantastic and Maximus is a fine turn. Don't really care about that. Just gonna go ahead and Get a Dracula down here for potential value in the middle. And we'll throw Moon Knight. If he's just holding on to something special, we'll get rid of it. And he had a Corvus in his hand, we get rid of that. And we got lucky and it hit Apocalypse, but we don't have anything else really to discard stuff from our hand, unfortunately. So we're going to have to uh, kind of strategically dump here. Go Medusa. Into our lizard right to try to get enough power. And you hate playing Proxima. But she does have value if she gets hit by the Dracula. So we're going to go ahead and fill the middle. It's going to get us to 13, 15. Yeah, we'll fill the middle here and we're going to throw down collector right. Actually won the game there. That's surprising. The leader ended up shooting him in the foot. That is a unlucky loss for him, but we take the victory. And next up we have Pose Rose. It's a nice Dazzler emblem. We have a decent opening hand. We got two cards to discard, two cards that like to be discarded. Okay with that. Echo middle lane here is fine. Sanctum Sanctorium is not great, but we do have Proxima. Collector is a great draw here. So next turn I will be playing Corvus onto the right lane because I know I'll have zero power in Sanctum and I know Proxima will get sent there. We have a great hand now too for Corvus. Oh, that is very unfortunate. But we do get the Noor. I'm going to go ahead and throw Moon Knight down. And I don't really care about the extra mana. I'm not going to load up a location for no reason. And that's a good discard. Getting rid of 
Oh, double Proxima in our hand is so good. I need to get cards out of my hand so I can draw a discard option. We have Blade and Modok left in our deck, so we're looking to dump cards here. I think I'm just gonna end up playing Blue Marvel here. And that Doc Ock is gonna make us lose the game, unfortunately. Now we have no way to discard, even if we draw a Modoc. Well, Morbius is not a bad draw, but. He's likely got 10 power to produce there and win that lane. We're not going to run away unless he snaps, though, because there is a chance that he uh, cannot produce enough power. That Cosmo right before our Corvus really did end up winning him the game, though, if uh, he's got enough power to win left here. And let us see what he has he's got an enchantress 22 power not gonna be enough so even with the cosmo preventing us from discard we still were able to produce enough power and it's really truly thanks to this collector that we won the left lane which shows the value of having the two options of the morbius and collector in this list and here we have Danny with the newest Modoc picture getting to the game. Collapse Mind, it's fine as long as he's not playing a destroyed deck. Got a collector in our opening hand, which is nice. And we have Modoc, so as long as we don't get unlucky and discard him again, we are going to be in good shape. We'd also prefer for him not to be pulled out here, but it's not the end of the world. That was Apocalypse was probably the only one we didn't want to get pulled out there, but it is what it is. Corvus here is not great because of my hand. I'm not going to play him on this turn. We're going to throw Dracula right here. Get the little buff. And next turn we're going to Morbius and Corvus for a pretty strong turn 5. Which leads us to a potential turn 6 play of Modoc. He's going to Korg and Demon... We're gonna play Morbius right, get a little buff because there's no guarantee our Dracula is gonna be good. And Corvus left to bump up our power and the collapse mine. Corvus hits Blade and Helicarrier, which is what we were looking for. Now we have a ton to discard with our Modoc if we need to. He's gonna annihil this, interesting. So we're absolutely Modocking. The question becomes whether I'm gonna play Dazzler or Chavez or not. I know I'm not gonna have anything in my hand as well for Morbius or Dracula to discard which is not great but he doesn't know that so he might not be thinking of playing into the quantum realm so I'm gonna go ahead and try to solidify my left lane and win now we have a really big Morbius into our Chavez and he Shadow Kings and Darkhawks to tie, and that's going to be a win because we produced more power into our left lane. And finally, we have Malco here with the Sentinel card. 
Olympia, we draw a bunch of cards to start our hand, and Collector in our opening hand is always a good thing, so we're going to be happy to throw him down on this turn. And the Vault is fine. I'm going to go ahead and throw the Collector on the Vault. I know he's going to mm, progress and be fine there, even if I don't end up putting any other cards in that location. There was an Okoye down. That's an interesting card to be playing, and that's not a Thanos list. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and Corvus here. There's too much value in getting him, not getting him out early. Got a few good targets in our hand to hit too. Helicarrier. Pretty decent. Selene Rhino, not what you're looking for. And Swarm is also a good hit here. So that was a pretty good Corvus. Ramped up. thinking we get Dracula out here and we just hit him with a blade on our swarm it's a pretty strong turn we would love to draw Modoc he is so extremely valuable to be in this list and not draw him would be a shame Morbius, not a bad draw. Uh, is he enough for me to want to throw him in there? He's got to surf that, so he's going to get an additional 8 power and go to 26. So it may be beneficial here to get Morbius down mid. I do think I'm going to do that. And I'm also going to play Moon Knight here, and maybe I hit his Solar Surfer. Hit the Gladiator, which is good. He lost a lot of potential power there with that. We're looking for Modoc here. Docking is not what we wanted to see. Especially since he's adding a card to our hand and it makes it worse for our Dracula. We are going to have to play him though and take the 50-50. Oh, he must not have Silver Surfer in his hand. That is a victory. So guys, that was some high level gameplay and deck overview of the Discard with Love deck. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you on the next one.